Hey everybody, I'd like to take a moment just to dedicate this episode to my friend Dave Harris, who recently passed. Uh, he was a big influence in the guitar community in Ohio and made a really big impression on me. I got to interview him for two episodes early last year, and he just absolutely blew us away with the kindness and just sheer knowledge that he shared with us. Uh, he hand-built me one of his own amps. Uh, his amps were the Tube Factory amps, which was kind of hilarious because it was just him building them. Uh, his proprietary design that he never changed over the course of about 60 years. I will always keep mine, and I know it's going to always sound great. Dave, thanks so much for your contribution to our guitar world. You will be missed. Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Tony Dudzik, Pick Guardian. Jared Brandon, Brandon Wild Pickups. Hey, it's me, Todd Novak. We're super to happy. We're super to happy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I like it. Super to happy. We are super happy to have you here with us on this fine day, whatever this fine day is for you. We are super excited right now because there's a few things going on in our little worlds. We just got our own home for this podcast. Yep. It's going to sound a little uh, uh, reverbian here. <laughs> going to hear a little bit of ambiance, but we will be working to dampen that. Point is, we have a home and we're excited about it. And we will be doing our podcast from here, from now on, till someone kicks us out. Uh, but... It's good. It's good to have a home. We're going to make it our own. It's going to be... It's going to be like a little clubhouse. That's right. <laughs> it's our fort. <laughs> yeah, like a little fort, yeah. except without blankets and chairs. <laughs> Yet. We have chairs. Yet. That is true. People, we are excited that you are listening. We are glad to have you. I know I've said that, but I really do mean it. It, it means a ton to us to have, uh, have you guys out there listening and uh, commenting and sharing and giving us, um, you know, digital high fives and stuff. It means the world to us. Um, speaking of digital high fives, we need to do a uh, a real quick digital high five to Grado because we are listening on their headphones right now uh, that they have so graciously provided for us. And uh, the he- these particular headphones that we're using are the SR80E. And they are, I sound, we, we sound good. And I'm just saying. Yeah, it sounds I, like I think good. E stands for extra nice. Extra good. Extra good. Extra good. Yeah, their headphones have been called the, the finest electricity to sound transducer in the world. That's easy for you to say. The finest electricity to sound transducer. Tra- <laughs> transducer. Right? Their headphones have been called the finest electricity to sound transducer in the world. That was the third try, just in case anybody was going, wow, he was really slick on that. We've said it four times yeah. total. Um, and, uh, and they make them by hand in Grip Brooklyn. So we're grateful to have them. Thank you. Check out gradolabs.com to go find your own that you can put on your own head. You could even listen to our podcast through a pair That's of right. Grados. Yeah, then you'd be able to hear what we sound like. Exactly. And from our heads. Like right now. But then, but later. Right. Yep. I think it's also worth bringing up that for most of the people in the guitar industry, and, and, you know, and I don't mean the builders and the makers, but I mean just everybody, the listeners, the players, and everything, uh, Andy Martin from Pro Guitar Shop, who we're probably all very familiar with. Oh, yeah. He's got the really crazy way of picking with his two fingers. Man, I don't know how he does that. That's crazy pants. He's, he's moved over to, uh, to Reverb.com, and he's easily one of the most recognizable figures in the online pedal world. Uh, he's going to continue to produce what many consider to be the gold standard of demo videos as part of Reverb.com. Those are some killer videos. They're great. They're really yeah. good. He puts a lot of time into it. Yeah. Um, so go to Reverb.com forward slash news to check out his latest videos, his latest demo videos, and whatever else he happens to be talking about. Uh, Reverb is actually asking everybody, all of us, to suggest topics that we'd like to learn about or uh, a piece of gear that we'd like to see Andy demo or really any other kind of idea or request. Uh, so you can email those in directly from Reverb.com. 
And even more super cool, one of the best parts about the old Pro Guitar Shop was the Free Pedal Friday. Whoa. Which mm. I still enter every Friday. <laughs> so throw a dog a bone, hey, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, and he's also brought that over to Reverb. Every Friday you can go to enter to win one of those top-of-the-line pedals, and they don't do pretty much anything else but top-of-the-line pedals. Do it every week, every Friday. Once you sign up to the site, it's you just got to hit enter, and then boom, you're entered. So you can go to Reverb.com forward slash free pedal Friday Whoa. and maybe you can win and let us know and if tell you win. me all about what winning feels like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brag about it and on yeah. the socials that's some good stuff for Excellent us all stuff. Um, we have more good news coming that we will discuss uh, in future episodes today we're going to discuss so you want to build a guitar oh yeah from parts. That's right. Because you're not a luthier. Right. <laughs> or a luther. Or a luther. <laughs> How do you really say that? Luthier. 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 Yeah. Okay. No, it's not, yeah, it's not, it, there's a U in there. It's not just luthier. But anyways, hey, you give it some, try, keep trying. Spell check. It, yeah. When you, when you spell it right and spell check tells me I spell it wrong. And I'm like, is luthier really a word? Wait, are you putting a Y in it or something? No, I'm okay. spelling it correctly. All right. How are you spelling it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. L-U-T-H-I-E-R. Uh-huh. Anyways, <laughs> this is not the spelling uh, podcast, so we're going to get on with it. So uh, basically, if you're going to listen to the rest of the show, which we hope you do, we're going to hear us talking all about how we're going to go about building um, each of our guitars. Tips and tricks. And yes. for some of us who have already built a bunch Built of a them. whole bunch of them. He's yeah. going to be helping us understand how to best do that. So I'm, will, I'm excited. I'm guessing I'll be helping you build these guitars. Too. Tony's right. built a Maybe. lot of them. I've built a few of them. <laughs> yeah. So I've built none of them. So well, I'm very excited. For you, brother. I'm very excited. Anyways, uh, we need to talk about what's going on with ourselves this week. So what's going on with ourselves this week, uh, Jared? I'm pretty excited because... Wait uh, a minute. <laughs> they gone it? <laughs> Tony, can you, can you tell the people something real quick? Well, I was, I was, I was looking over your way. Yeah. I don't know if you noticed me blinking my eyes. I'm sure many out there are wondering... I can how, hear your brain fighting right now. How with, can I... With, with itself going like... How? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to edit in my head. This yeah, it's difficult. not working. Yes. How can I help out a show like The Guitar Knobs, a mm-hmm. podcast, if you will? Yep. <laughs> but anyhow, if you would go to patreon.com, mm-hmm. uh, and I believe it's a forward slash, That's The right. Guitar Knobs, uh, you'll see some details on how you could possibly help support a show like us. We really do appreciate everything that, uh, uh, that you can send our way. And uh, there's some great little prizes to be had for the higher levels. And, uh, and even the low check ones. Check it out. And even the low ones, yeah. yeah. If you pay a lot and you're an executive producer, you get your name right on the thing. Yeah. How about that? At the end of the show, it's pretty cool. So anyhow, it's patreon.com. I'm giving Jared my straight face. See what he does. <laughs> mm. Okay, pa- patreon.com patreon. forward slash the guitar, the guitar knobs. knobs. There you go. All things. right. Now, Jared, tell us what's going on this week, buddy. All right, guys. So this is... Totally appropriate for today's show. Thank you, Tony. There it is. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I I don't think we should interrupt Jared anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. This week in my world of guitar stuff, I have a customer that wants a set of wide range pickups. Uh, he wants to be able to split the, the coils uh, so you can get a single coil sound. Mm-hmm. And... Instead of me sending him a list of parts to buy uh, for a new wiring harness, you know, after I, you know, send him the pickups that are mm-hmm. done, I just said, hey, send your whole pick guard to me, just how it is, and I will take care of everything. So, wait, his whole pick guard? His What's whole pick in? guard. He sent his whole pick guard with all the electronics still on it, the wiring harness and the pickups. What's he putting it on? He, this is uh, a Fender, I believe it's a Fender Thin Line. Okay. Because, yeah, it's got the lever switch and two pots. Okay. So I did a, uh, I did a set of wide range for him, 
And I actually used his covers because they say Fender. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can split the I can split the coils, so it'll sound like a a single coil uh, pickup. Mm-hmm. And a wide range is they're so hot that if you split split the coil, you'll get around six, you know, five to six k, which is about the the uh, output of a normal Fender Telecaster pickup anyway, so it, it's going to sound really great. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this guy, he needed this thing for, because he plays it on the weekends, he has gigs on the weekends, and I promised him I'd, I'd have this thing done for him and, and ready to go. So, mm-hmm. so I uh, finished it today, actually, for him on a, on a <laughs> Sunday, and... Uh, can't wait to hear his reaction when he gets it and he puts it in his guitar. All he's gonna have to do is just drop the thing in his guitar. So how did you uh, how did you do the tap for the uh, for the coil or single coil sound? Well, you have. Oh, I don't understand what you mean. You mean did you put a switch in? Oh did yeah 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 yeah. A... Push pull. I'm sorry. Okay. I was gonna explain how I tapped it and. All that through the guts of the pickup and everything, but because there's there's a really cool way to do this um, that PV used on uh, like their T40s, T60s, and things. Oh yeah, where you take that basically. So what you're doing is you're taking the what do you use red green? I don't know what are your yeah uh, those those wires. You take that to ground through a switch. You can actually tie those into the empty lug on a uh, on a uh, on your on your tone control. Yeah. And it, uh, when you turn the tone all the way up, it sends it to ground, and uh, it, it's a really cool way to do it. Oh yeah, that is that does sound pretty cool. So it's a, and it's super simple too because you just like I said, you just tie it into that empty lug on the uh, on the tone control. I'll have to try that out on one of my own guitars one of these days. Yeah, the problem with two pickups is, I mean, it works if you're just tapping a single pickup. You couldn't tie. Those other yeah, if together. you if you tied both pickups into that, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work, right? And you, they would mess with each other all the time. You couldn't separate them, right? So on the push pull, there's actually two different yep. uh, circuits for the for the ground. So, um, but if you were running, lines. say, like a Tele uh, Custom, like a '70s Tele Custom that had a single wide range, yeah, you could tap that that way, yeah, with uh, going into the empty lug. So that uh, that guitar is going to be real versatile for them, especially in a live thing. You don't have to take your guitar off and switch it around. You can, so that's that's pretty cool. That's that's pretty much what was going to my world this week. Excellent. That sounds like a fun project. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Cool. I like Get those. To learn a little bit about pickups while we're at it. Tony, what's going on, bud? So uh, last time we spoke, uh, I told you I picked up this uh, Southbound Custom Guitars, basically like a, it looks very much like a Rickenbacker, Rickenbacker Combo 850. It has a German carved top and blah, 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 blah. So I did some research in it, got it for a very good price. Uh, actually a ridiculous, I feel almost guilty for what That I is a nice guitar. Dude. Yeah. Um, so it came in. And uh, it had some damage from shipping. Oh, yeah. yeah. Boy. And that's, you know, <laughs> that will, I'm going to segue into, if you're going to ship a guitar, uh, the best way is to put it inside of a case, a hard case. Mm-hmm. And even if it's in a hard case, wrap the headstock up in, in bubble wrap or T-shirts or whatever. Right. Even paper. Because a a, a a guitar can move around even inside of a case. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've had some that have arrived with a broken headstock because it bashed into the front. So um, in this case, it was shipped in a gig bag inside of a box. And if I ever if I don't have a hard case to ship in, I always double box them. And had that happened, this little bit of damage uh, would not have happened. But. Um, the silver lining. So um, if you are ever in a situation like this, and I did contact the seller first, and, you know, we both, I guess, kind of agreed that, you know, he, he felt that he packed it well. That's questionable. Um, dealing with FedEx on something like that can be, uh, 
It's a headache. It's a headache because they want you to save all the packaging and save and photographs, blah, 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 blah. And it's almost not worth it. I mean, I, I, I got some cost estimates to do the repair, and it was, you know, between $100 and $150. Did you find the paint chips? There were chips inside of the, the gig bag, okay. yeah. So I knew so it happened. That, yeah. it, it happened there. I mean, it's, there's no doubt about it at that point. And the photographs that were on the auction were, you know, clearly there was no damage. Right. So um, if you're ever in a situation like that, um, and I thought, you know, everything, I thought I was just going to have to live with it or eat the repair. I used PayPal and, um, surprisingly PayPal, um, has what, I guess what they call their buyer protection plan. Oh yeah. They've had that for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so I, 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 you know, I said, well, let me just give them a call and see what's going on. And this is the first time I've ever called PayPal and have actually talked to a human. So I think they're doing some things a little different there, but, uh, the guy was very helpful. I told him the situation and he said, well, let's just file a claim. And, you know, if you say it's going to be between $100 and $150, let's use the $150 for the amount. And uh, so uh, so I said, okay, well, let's do it. You know, and uh, a few hours later, I had $150 back in my account. Um, the seller he stepped up to the plate and I, and I applaud him for doing that. Um, you know, he could have probably, you know, said, well, I'll, drug I'll cover half of it. And, or, yeah. But, yeah. but you know, he, he did it and uh, he contacted me. He, he, at first he was a little upset. He said, well, why didn't you contact me? And I said, well, you know, we did exchange messages and it <laughs> sounded like you didn't want to do anything, but, right. <laughs> uh, but it worked out really well. And now, you know, I can have it repaired and brought back to the same standard and it's still an excellent price for 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 this for that particular instrument so uh lesson is if you haven't shipped a guitar um check with someone who has yeah and you know see what you should do um and just pack it really really well and it gets rid of 99 percent of the problems in shipping yes that's my week awesome how about you? Lesson learned. That's a daunting thing. That, that, that's a daunting thing. If you haven't shipped a guitar before, it's like, how, how do I do this? Yeah, you, you know? don't allow yourself any time, and you just think you're just going to do it real quick, right? Yeah. And then you just throw it in there and be like, ah, heck, it'll be all right. No. Yeah. You know, it usually it, doesn't go that way. Yeah, if it's traveling, you know, maybe between an adjacent state, if it's not, you know, every time it, it gets onloaded or offloaded on a truck, no matter what service you use, there's a chance something's going to Something get damaged. Something can happen. Because they yank it off the truck, they throw it on a conveyor about belt, it bounces around, and then it goes to the next place and uh, gets the same treatment. I bought a winder, um, a, a, a nice large winder, and it came in a big, giant cardboard box. There was a hole in the box, and there was oil <laughs> around that hole. And then there was oil in the box on the winder. Now, luckily... The oil was actually good for the winder, but I know the seller didn't like puncture the hole in the box and then just randomly sort of put oil in the box over everything. It was the weirdest thing I ever saw, but I just wiped the winder down and heck, it's, you know, well oiled machine now, oh, <laughs> but, it's, yeah. but I didn't, I didn't have a problem with that and. You know, yeah, a lot of times it, it can be perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we've all ordered but things. stuff can happen in the trucks, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, how about you, Todd? Well, okay, so on my quest for a tremolo that uh, will do the job, I got onto Reverb and I got a, a Cusack Effects tremolo, an AME, which stands for Amplitude Modulation Effect. I don't know why they called it that, but it's based on the Tapa Whirl, which is like kind of their like claim to fame. It, you know, it's got it's got level, it's got depth, it's got rate, uh, and it's got a waveform selector, which I, I really did want because uh, on some of the effects I'm doing for the band, like I need like a full on helicopter chop. On others, I just I would like to be able to have a cool smooth one, right? So helicopter chop, go to square wave, right? Yep. Uh, a smooth one, go to the smooth wave. I mean, so there's a sign, there's a square, and there's a square ramp. So the square ramp, I believe, is the one in the middle. Okay. And I haven't totally mastered what the sound on that is. 
but should be interesting. <laughs> uh, but one really cool thing is on the, the rate knob is clear. So the CUSAC effects kind of famously use these tiny chicken head knobs. And, and the, the middle one, the one in the middle, which is rate, strobes. Oh, that's so, cool. So, so you have an idea. It gives you a visual if, cue. If you're at your show and you're like, wait, that looks off, you can fix it. So is that, a, uh, uh, is that an optical tremolo? Well, it's... So uh, I pulled this up right before we, we were doing this episode so that I could speak to it because I can't recall this by memory. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, because it's, it's a little tricky. So uh, this essentially, it's got a thing called a vactrol which is essentially, you know, it's, like, it's like the heart of the tremolo unit. Uh, I'm going to read this. This isn't, I'm going to, you know, I don't want to be like, oh, you know, I'm going to look at me ad lib this, but I'm going to read it. Uh, a Vactrol, also called a resistive opto isolator, is essentially an LED and light sensitive resistor in one package, enabling the value of the resistor to be determined by the amount of light it receives from the LED. And since the LEDs can re relatively accurately emit light depending on the amount of voltage applied, this makes for a very practical and efficient way of controlling a signal. Although there are other ways of achieving a tremolo effect without going digital, a Vactrol is probably the most common. And they are not only used in many popular pedals and amp amplifier tremolo effects, but also... You say, what, what else are they? What else would that be used in? Well, but also in <laughs> in in Univibe, vibrato, envelope, and compressor type circuits, as well as analog modular synthesizers. That's a lot of information on a tremolo pedal right there. Oh yeah! Wow! I know, right? So, I, so I'm, to answer my question, <laughs> I guess technically it is. Yeah, it's an optical, but not in the I guess in the traditional sense. Right, uh, where there would be like a photo cell right. kind of thing, but uh, but it uh, sounds like it operates on the same principle. Yeah, it sounds like you're trying to describe like a a a, a an amp that's valve like a valve state amp. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, what is it? <laughs> mm. Anyhow, uh, cool. so anyway, yeah, it's cool, and I I think I got a pretty good deal on it. Um, I got to mess around with some of the knobs. I just got the thing, so I haven't like fully immersed myself in it that's pretty cool pretty cool pedal nice yeah we will expect a full report yeah well that that was a pretty full report <laughs> <laughs> i might mention if i really like it or not but uh you know you're buying something sight unseen and you know you're checking out demos and stuff and fortunately there's you know some decent demos and the one i got just for uh, uh if you tend to if you want to go look this up this is the red pedal that has sort of like these retro electric, electronic uh, graphics on it. Blue knobs with one clear knob. Cool. Yeah. Nice. They look top pretty, top they mount look jacks pretty. too. Oh, and it has an, it has an, uh, a tap uh, jack. So if you have like a, a little tap pedal. Oh, yeah. Tap tempo, baby, you can, you can use that. Was that the RCA looking? Yeah. Yeah. So. Very cool pedal. There you go. Nice. Ta-da. Oh, man. Let's get to the good stuff. Yep. So this episode, we are going to talk about putting a guitar together. That's right. I am excited about this because I have not done it, but I am sitting in the company of two guys who are very familiar with it and whom I can learn a thing or two from. Jared's going to be building one too. Yeah. And uh, this came out of the last episode where I identified a pretty sweet... Uh, Jag, I think it was called the Jag Bastard uh, by Rock and Roll Relics. Yeah. And um, so I said, man, I really want one of those. And Tony said, man, I got one of those. And I said, man, let me borrow that. And he said, man, you can do it. <laughs> so I borrowed it and I went home and played it. And I was like, oh, crap. Now I got to have one of these. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, you know, sometimes you can pick up a guitar and it's like, man, it just flows out of you. You, you, know, you don't have to coax it to do anything. And this was one. This was one of those guitars. Well, so it's just my guitar. I, well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> mine has the same mojo. Just with mojo. Mojo. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Exactly. That's what we were both calling it. I tasked him with getting me a literal Christmas list of like, I need all the stuff. Give me all the parts. Give me all the things. But there's more that goes into it than give me all the parts. So 
Jared's going to talk about the one he's going to build. I'm going to talk about the one I'm going to build. And Tony's going to give us color and insight because he's not building one because he's on building restriction for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> he's been kind of doing, buying a lot of guitars I'm lately. running out of space. Yeah. 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 So I'm, uh, I'm actually going to put together a traditional jazz master. And I wanted uh, some specific details on the neck. What would those details be? Well, in '66, in 1966, Fender made the Jazzmaster, and they had block inlay, and they had binding on the neck. Mm -hmm. And I really, really like the look of that. And it's got the big CBS headstock. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know those details, a certain uh, corporation took over Fender, and they CBS. That's right, and they made the. Uh, <laughs> CBS. This is CBS, and they made the headstocks larger, so it's it's got that detail too. So, and that was just for that was just to make it theirs, right? And was there any other rationale? Well, okay, let's back up a few years because right. um, actually, Jazz Masters and Jaguars both had the big what we call the big Strat headstock. Yeah, um, those came out originally. I think that big headstock may have come out. 60, in the mid 60s, yeah. maybe early 60s, 60 on Jags. 64, 63? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, something like that. Um, I want to say that some of the original Jazz Masters may have had a smaller headstock, but I'd have to do a little research to see. But those might have had the big, big, big headstocks too. So it's, it, it really has nothing to do with CBS so much as, um, as just the design of the time. Uh, rumor has it that they did it because they wanted to change the logo and be able to make the logo a little bit oh. larger. So I thought maybe it was more economical the way they were cutting the, the wood out. Yeah, probably okay. not. Probably not. Well, anyway, so... I like those ones. I'm a fan of the big head stuff. The big head stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe because it doesn't look all like... I, I, was, I like them. Anyways, <laughs> go ahead. I'm going to not get myself into trouble here. So, eh, it's all right. So, uh, that's... That's really the important specific thing that I really wanted with my Jazzmaster because it's it's only a one year deal really and uh, of course you can buy reissues now or whatever in the and there's an artist model with the same details but um, so what, what uh, in terms of pickups and things what are you thinking of in there and and let me let me tell you that one of the main reasons I'm buying that or buying I'm putting this thing together. Mm -hmm. is to test my own pickups out that I'm building. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to do a, a few different demos. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build some traditional Jazzmaster pickups, uh, you know, vintage spec, spec and stuff like that. And then I'm going to do a P90 Jazzmaster where the bobbin is going to have the, the dimensions of a P90 but it'll still like it look like a Jazzmaster pickup. Um, actually, it will have the adjustable pole screws too. So cool. What we should do is, since you're going to use multiple pickups, we should maybe come up with some modification or something to the guard, or even use different kind of connectors, so yeah. that if you, you don't have to take the guard off every time. Solder and desolder and all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, we could we could figure something out. Yeah, let's do that. But. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm I'll probably just leave traditional pickups in it when I'm done with the demos, and uh, or if I build something else too in the future. So standard uh, trim, just Jag standard. Jazzmaster trim bridge. What yeah, you on there. Now I was gonna refer to you as to what is the best trim system. Oh, you mean me? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I, there, there you are might some, know. No, I don't know. Okay, there are there are some really <laughs> good options out there, and a lot of it has depends on how much you want to spend. I mean, if money is no object, Mastery makes a wonderful bridge and tail, uh, bridge and uh, and trim tailpiece, but they're very expensive. Oh, a um, couple hundred bucks, or mm, yeah, just oh. for the yeah. Man, I didn't pay that much for the neck. Well, and that's just it. You don't want. I mean. For what you're doing, I don't know that you want to spend a tremendous amount of money. So you can get a, a really good, uh, you know, Fender sells the parts um, pretty much on any Jag or... But while you're on that real quick, like, I mean, let's be honest. If you're in, like, 
if you're in one of those bands that where you're constantly using the actual vibrato, it might be worth stepping up. Yeah. But if you use it like occasionally. Yeah. I mean, kind of, in, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with the standard uh, Fender Jaguar Jazzmaster tremolo. Just to have it set up really well, right? Setting yeah. it up is half the battle. Yeah. I mean, the mastery bridge is actually very nice in that it keeps the strings, uh, you know, the way that the, they make their saddles, it really keeps the strings where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, another trick that I've been doing with those type of guitars is I use a Mustang bridge. Uh, which is essentially the same as a as a jazz master or jaguar bridge, but it only has one groove. string groove. I just use duct tape. Yeah, or you could use <laughs> duct tape <laughs> <laughs> for that really great sitar sound. So, <laughs> you know, depending on uh, the quality of this stuff, because I I have the body now and the body looks great. It just needs finished, mm -hmm. and I, I'll probably get the neck tomorrow. And. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I, uh, depending on how good, you know, good I can get, to, I think I'm going to take that stuff down the street to our friend, mm -hmm. uh, Chris, and and have him kind of assess what's going on with, because I'm I'm building this on the cheap, guys. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not over 120, 130 on Isn't each. Isn't that neck really expensive? Like no. you kind of went like a Cadillac neck on that thing. It's a it? Cadillac neck, but I only paid I don't know 120, 130 bucks. And for the body. Well, so. I'll, I'll be curious to see, too, because, I mean, I there are people that I deal with that I, that I know make consistent parts and, yeah. uh, and, and necks and bodies and that sort of thing. And sometimes, I mean, yeah, you can score some really good deals um, on, you know, whether it's Reverb or eBay or any of those places. But um, always a word of caution. <laughs> Because yeah. in th unless you're looking at it physically, you really don't know what you're getting. So are you talking about like to the fitting of the wood or like well, what exactly would you be need to be wary of? Quality. I quality mean, quality of what? Of the wood itself. Um, a lot of times if, and I'm, I'm assuming uh, that these are coming from overseas, you know, the, the wood might not be seasoned okay. as long as it should. Um, I, I, I don't want to scare you, but I mean, you just never know what you're getting into. No, I know. But, um, but you know, if it works out, that's, that's even better. Oh well, yeah. I mean, if, if you know some guys that so, can go ahead, Doc. I'm sorry. I totally, that was so rude. I'm sorry, Jared. <laughs> I was being rude. It's going to happen to all of us a hundred more times. Go ahead. Well, I mean, if, if you know a few people that can finagle things and, yeah. you know. And then the other, the other part of that is, uh, the neck pocket is critical mm -hmm. in, you know, if it's, if, if what, if you have company A's neck trying to put it onto company B's body, yeah. it doesn't always work. And there's usually a little bit of either, you know, it's either too tight, uh, which is easier to fix and that you can sand it out yeah, a little bit. Yeah, too tight is good. Or if it's too loose, then that's not yeah, so good. It's not that great. That's, you you got to use the shims. Yeah, you know? and then that's a bit dodgy, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so um, when you're bringing components together, whether it's bodies, bridges, pickups, whatever, it's always good to get everything out, set it on the table, see how everything fits before you even go into finish. Right. Because once you go into finish, it's another can of worms sometimes. But, oh, yeah. but if everything fits nice, I mean, there should be a little play in the neck and the body joint. Because once you finish it, it's going to be tight. The finish it gets makes it right. tighter. Is the neck finished? The neck is finished. It's got that that amber nitro, and I don't like how amber it is really, because you don't really see original fenders that yellow. Yeah. Well, you, you could don't. always strip it, but just be careful with the binding. Yeah, that too. I mean, that binding might be the uh, the kind of binding that's real sensitive to acetone. Probably ABS. Or yeah. Whatever, so, yeah. and I noticed another thing about this neck that the binding's not bound correctly at the butt of the neck. It's got an overhang. It's got an overhang, and the, the original ones weren't like that. Overhang. But if it if it every <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if it fits it. on if it fits on the body and everything, yeah. you know, yeah, you, I'm not gonna mess with it. Yeah, so. I, I would just with that overhang, you just want to make sure that it because yeah. of the type of pickups that you want to put in there that it's not. 
right I mean, this this ears. isn't going to be a show a, a showroom guitar that you know I'm going to try to you know flaunt on stage you know like a big showman. I mean, this is a it's just going to be a guitar and building for samples and and a little bit for playing pleasure as well. And uh, I don't that, know. Is I that just what you of, say when you see somebody with a really showy guitar? And you're like, look at that guy on stage flaunting his. <laughs> look at that. He's like a big showy. showman. He's like a showman. He's like a big showman up there. Yeah, look at all the sparkles in that finish. <laughs> <laughs> you're flaunting it. <laughs> <laughs> no, anyways, what color are you gonna make it again, buddy? I don't. I don't know yet. Mm. What do you think? White. Uh, white. White. Yes. Mm. Do a matching headstock too. I don't know. That's it's curious. I don't know. I'm I thinking love, about I, orange, I'm a man. Fan of matching. I I I want to do that in my. But we'll get to mine in a little bit. But. You know what? That'd be cool. It would be cool to put the the guitar knobs sticker, like the circle one, right on the on the kind of the the round part I of the big CBS hot, headstock. Oh yeah. No, that that might fit. No, no that's too big. That's and huge. You, dang it. Yeah. Anyways, but that, that, yeah, nice try. Thank you. We'll, we'll think about we'll, that. We'll well, I, I got a guy that can make decals on, oh, the, on the cheap, too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So we can size it to whatever you yeah. want. Yeah. Um, if people need to find that guy on the uh, who uh, other people that are looking to build. Yeah. I'll, they, I'll, I'll, I'll pass his information on. Okay, great. It, he's, he makes them primarily for, like, model railroads and, yeah. and model rockets. That's awesome. But um, the, he's, he's so the water transfer? Water transfer decals. That's rad. I'm going to have to get a hold of that guy, too. Okay. Because uh, my people that do decals for me for my product, mm -hmm. they say the, the paper they use is they discontinued it. Really? So, huh. yeah. So I can make, on mine, I can make a logo for it, and it'll look like proper. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Because you're sure. you're a guy that can I can, can do do, or do the graphic stuff. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, sir. I, I can give you the the breakdown. The, the guy that I use, uh, go ahead and give it to me. Does have I will. Ah. Um, he uses metallic silver and metallic gold too, so Ooh. you can mix those in with other colors. Well, I'm, you know, it's going metallic gold because <laughs> I'm all about that. Right now. Well, of course. All uh, right, Jared. Um, what kind of tuners are you putting on that thing? Well, I have some <laughs> fill this gullet full of ice. Yeah, I just put a piece of ice on it. Oh. That's good radio. So <laughs> the tuners that I might use for this are the tuners that came on that 1966 Stratocaster that I talked about in the last episode uh, because I'm going to use uh, inline Clusens for the 66. I should go on that thing. Uh, so... These tuners are Grover tuners. They're inline Grover tuners, and they have a, a square pearl uh, key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those would look cool on that neck because of all the pearl inlay going on. Yeah, on that it. would be kind of cool. Is it yeah. pearl inlay or is it white kind of like that? Uh, it's pearloid. It's, it's acrylic. Yeah. It's pearl acrylic. Like right, pearl, Almost everybody is, is it super that. modeled mm. or is it that just sort of like almost flattish looking white? Probably going to be more flattish if I had to guess. I don't remember. I looked I at the you picture. Wait. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> if, if it's close, I'm not going to care. Yeah, okay. You know, because the, the old original stuff, I like the way that looks. Yeah. But this that's, real, looking, that's real pearl material. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. You know, I don't have big expectations. <laughs> it'd be kind of cool if you threw some uh, like hot red pinstripes on that, almost like a Billy Gibbons. Um, you know, that uh, I can't remember which model. I know what you're right. talking about. He's got it on an SG. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Among others. Yeah. If I didn't have so much going on with the neck. I mean, just, just you got pearl tuners and pearl make, in there. Make, and make the just, stripes pearl. And then we, yeah. and then, there we go. Make the whole, just go. I crazy, thought about, man. I thought about doing a, uh, a wallpaper paisley, like the pink paisleys. But yeah. find some other crazy psychedelic oh, looking wallpaper. No. If you're gonna do wallpaper, you gotta do like little uh, the toy trains or something like that, like on a little little kids wallpaper, <laughs> <laughs> little toy rockets. Like you sweet. had my brain going because I actually like toy trains. Yeah. Okay. But I think I'm. I looked at Paisley. I think I'd rather do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it sounds like you've got your project mapped out. 
Kind of. The finish I'm not solid on. Yeah. But uh I've got plenty of time before I would before you I go would there. you go natural? No, man. It's just nah. Right. Not not with the neck the way it is. Okay. Nah. Interesting. Although the three the this the burst, what's that the traditional burst they put on those? Tone like the sixty three tone burst? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Black, red, yellow. I'm not against Ooh, those. What if you did it sort of like a burn style burst with the gr- with the green and the black? That would look pretty tight. The old burns. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Is it, yeah, the, yeah, bu- yeah. Is it the buffalo? Bison. Bison. Bison, Bison oh, base. Oh yeah. Man. Mm-hmm. Those are those are cool looking. As far as the hardware and stuff, I haven't really purchased that yet. So yeah. All right. Is it going to be distressed hardware or no? All shiny. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's going to be... I'm not going to do anything aged or old looking. You know what you could do? I'm I'm just going to throw this out there. Going back to my Christmas list, Frank Dimel, he's building some crazy, awesome offset. I saw the last thing he did. Oh, my gosh, really are you great. kidding me? The, the, the black glitter? The black glitter. Good yep. Lord, that was a beautiful guitar. That catches my but eye. But what I'm saying that. is like, dude, man, you go crazy with that thing. Yeah. Like, I got so many glitter guitars now. Just do it. Make it crazy. <laughs> uh, anyhow, rad, man. Yeah. Anything else about that that you're doing special? Wiring, specialities, knobs? Uh, you know, as we go along, pick guard, I'll let what you are you know. doing for the pick guard? Oh, that's a good question. Probably Pearl. I know a guy. You're leaving out all the fun stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> all you're the not, details. Talking about now, the you know neck how, binding. Now, you know how a jazz master, they have a control up here yeah. and a control down. They all do the same thing. No, they don't. They don't? We went no. through this extensively. <laughs> we, we, we shan't not darken that doorway again. But anyway, what I was where I'm going at is this body I bought, it doesn't have those routes. Oh, okay. Well then out. just do the lower stuff. A lot of a lot of people just bypass that up, have, upper no, thing. I, I want the upper stuff because I like just the way it looks. I like the aesthetics more than I actually will probably care for the functionality. That well, I mean Here's the deal. Both on Jags and Jazz Masters, they thought it would be cool to have a rhythm position, which is that up position. Okay. And then there's two roller pots that so you can have kind of a preset rhythm tone. Yeah, they're like tiny. And then when you push that switch down, that's the lead position. And that gives you the ability to combine uh the pickups going out to the uh the main volume and tone. Yeah, and what's really cool was that you know, the bridge was reverse wound and reverse polarity to the neck as well. Um, that's how they did that was even back in the 50s. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. So, yeah, so a lot of people, I mean, there's a lot of extra wires that go into that circuit and running the wires there and then back down into the other cavity. So a lot of people end up just scrapping the upper part and just go into that, the three-way toggle and out to the volume and tone. More of a, a simplicity thing, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. less wire means more signal feeding through. Yeah, that's true. Mm, I knew that. You knew that. So, um, so I think it's cool that you're going to put a jazz master together. Um, if this is someone's first project, <laughs> i.e., Todd or anyone else out there, um, I think the ideal guitar to put together is probably a telecaster style guitar yeah Yeah. um mainly because of the simplicity Mm -hmm. um and there's not a lot of things that can go wrong you learn a lot anytime you introduce a tremolo you're introducing some potential issues oh yeah so todd you you had talked about doing what you know some people call a jazz caster or a telemaster or Or a jazz jazz bastard bastard i like that one (laughs) (laughs) there's 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 any number of them so it's essentially a uh jazz master body did you say telemaster a telemaster yeah yeah i was just checking to see if we checked them all off yes well there's there's more so explain Explain to the good folks out there. That's what I was getting ready to do. Why don't you do that then? I'm going to do it right this very yeah. minute. So basically... Tell what them it, what it's about. Okay, what it is about uh-huh. is... Uh, like so, the difference between a <laughs> telecaster and <laughs> Go ahead. I, I, I won't do that. <laughs> so uh, essentially what all of those um, style of guitars 
revolve around is a jazz master body mm-hmm. that is routed for a tele bridge, uh, tele pickups, and a tele control plate. Right. Um, since a jazz master and a telecaster are the same scale length, really the only main difference is the body is routed for a tele neck mm-hmm. instead of a rounded, more strat style neck pocket. Mm-hmm. I see. But you still retain the simplicity, which is why I didn't discourage you from going that direction. Yes. Um, but it's, um, it's, it should be a, a cool project, and, and I think we'll be able to report on I'm that. I'm excited. But, but yeah, anytime you, you want to start with something as simple as possible, because like I said, you throw you know, a tremolo in or you throw any n- other number of things in there, and it complicates you know, the build mm. and can sometimes make for so, so, some not-so-fun yeah. stuff. So the things that I'm doing on my guitar, which I don't know what I'm going to call it yet. I'm going to call it something. It's going to have like a name. It'll have a name like Vince. (laughs) Maybe it's going to be called Vince. The Vinny. The Vinny. (laughs) That'd be kind of cool. I don't know. Yeah, it's something like that, I think. I was feeling it. Because I think when it then it's going to kind of feel like Vince. I'm not a name your guitar. Do you name your guitar? I don't. I haven't named any of mine, but this one I feel like needs to be named because it's my first build and it needs to be named something. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, better than Archibald, I suppose, (laughs) right? That would sound, you know, like in an article, his main guitar, Archibald. (laughs) No, 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 that doesn't. (laughs) I will never be mentioned in an article and it's okay. Uh, So... One of the I've been chasing down this my, one of my own builds for some time, and I found a Instagram an an Instagram post that had this Tele uh, it, was, it was a Tele custom that I absolutely just lost my mind over. I think it might have been an old Nash. It's such an old picture I can't remember, but I literally kept that picture in my phone for like a year because. It just knocked me off my feet. Now, the only th- the, it wasn't a it wasn't anything that was like gorgeous or beautiful or whatever. But it has this. It was black, but it it had a burnished top to it, so it wasn't super shiny. It didn't have a ton of ni- of poly or nitro or anything like that. It it was like a really well-worn piece of furniture that yeah. just has that w- strange burnish to it. Um, and it was like very lightly relict, not, not super, um, Tony, I say found it that I sent it to him. Um, and it is, a, it is a, a Nash. Nash. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which one way that you can kind of tell Nash, uh, the, the butt of a telly is like a little bit flatter. I think at least that's one of the things that, it mentally so the finish is going to be kind of like a satin it's it's weird because it's not like a, it isn't it's satin. smooth it's, it's almost like a polished satin okay yeah, yeah it's, it's and that's what i mean like by a worn burnished. through satin right like burnished if you think about furniture like anywhere where you have you can see where somebody's put their like arm or elbow arm or there for on. years it just has this weird sheen to it yeah it's kind of dull but yeah. it has a sheen to it anyways I got you. And I just lost my mind over it. It was just, I, I loved it. <laughs> and so I said, all right, I, I, I have to have one of these. So I was going to do a Tele Custom, which I love Tele Customs, uh, with a wide range at the top and the, and the standard Tele in the bridge. That's what I wanted. Black yeah, on, that's a Tele Black custom. on black. Tele, that's, tele Custom. That's going to be like a one-of-a-kind deal. Um. The one I'm doing? Yes. Well, it will be. And that's going to be pretty awesome. Because this is going to be that same finish on on a Jazz Master body, but it's going to be a Tele Custom setup. That, yeah, that's going to be pretty and awesome. And I want to do the same thing. I actually am thinking about doing like a, a light like a light gold, almost like a cheap, I'm going to say it's going to be a cheap gold spray paint kind of underneath, right? And then that flat, that 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 black burnished black on top with a little bit of relic. So any of the relic that does come through just has a very very subtle, very subtle gold underneath it. Not heavy, not sparkly, just sort of goldish. Um, 
and it'll have just, I think, a little bit of light relic. Now, these are rounded corners, so I think it's going to be tricky. It's not like, a, a, you know, something with sharper edges where, where it's easier to, to kind of find those edges to, to relic a little bit. I don't want it to look heavily modeled relic because I, I just don't want to go down that path completely. I don't want to fully commit to that. Um, I yeah, just but, the, but even look, rounded, you know, and, and, and things that have an arm cut or a belly cut all take damage. Yeah. Or I, use, just wanna, I just want to give it a little, bit of, yeah. a little bit of love. Yeah, you don't need to go into the down the relic road to get it to where you want it to look, right. especially well, if you play it a lot. Right, and It'll especially if I, if I don't fast. put tons and tons of, uh, like, nitro on it or yeah. uh, whatever finish we're going to ultimately put on that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, I just want it, like, just, like, dusted. So it's almost... Um, what you're talking about is is kind of like a candy apple red finish, except you're using black instead of red. Um, because when you do a candy apple red, the guitar is finished in gold first, and then they shoot a, a, a transparent red yeah, over the top of it. Except I don't. I, I want to. You don't want to see any flake. I don't want to see any gold underneath, okay. except where just the little okay. subtle relic has been exposed, and any future actual wear. It'll just barely expose, and maybe I don't know. Maybe it won't see anything at all. And just in my head, it seems like that was that would be a yeah. kind of a cool feature. Like when you see like an old white Jazzmaster or Jaguar, uh, like the one John Losco brought in, where it was wearing off, and you could see the actual burst underneath. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like, oh wow, look at the burst underneath. It was just right. like, wait, is that burst under there? Like yeah. you could yeah. just barely see. And it, it was. Yeah, it was, and that was yeah. original. That was that was. OG relicking. Anyways, well, you know, you know how that transpired. A lot of times, well, uncertain depending on the model, but a lot yeah. of times Fender would get a an order for a custom color. That's exactly what this one was, and it was a matching headstock too. Yeah, so they would they would literally in some cases if they didn't have any raw yeah. bodies ready to finish, they would pull one off the line. Yeah, shoot the new finish over the top, yeah, was, and a lot was, of times they were bursts or it whatever. Was absolutely beautiful. Anyways, uh, so. I'm going to do that with um, a nice sparkly gold pick guard. I think we should do the black and gold sparkle. I don't. Well, we'll see. We'll see. We can we'll do, play around. We with can it. do a couple. We can do whatever. I know a guy. Yeah, I know a guy too. <laughs> uh, I I would like to do a painted headstock, the same burn, mm -hmm. that same kind of black burnish, and then throw one of those decals on for whatever I name it. Yeah, it's it, it complicates things to do that. I'm definitely going to do that to mine too. Yeah, the uh, headstock. and I think with a painted headstock, a lot of times if, I think maybe there's the idea that it has to be perfect, and it's not painted all the way around. It's just painted on the on face, the top, on the right. top face, mm -hmm. right? Um, but because I'm adding that little bit of already like roughed up, not full relic at all, I think it'll be a little bit more forgiving. You'll just have to uh, think about what color you want to use on the decal. Same. Colors, black. I mean, uh, no, gold, wouldn't. gold. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go, baby. Um, Probably have to shoot white over the back of it, too. Whatever. Yeah. And then yours, we'll uh, the same tuners you had, which were? Just clues on or go, yeah, go to. Weren't they different? They were, no. well, they were a little meatier than they were. Yeah, oh, on. you know what? Those that one, those are probably tone pros. They are. On there. They, they look like. Yeah. Tony pros. They look like clues on's, but they're b beefier. Uh, just barely. Barely. Yeah, the, 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 the major difference was, uh, and I don't think Tone Pros is making clues on style tuners anymore, but they put sort of a shoulder uh, where the, the, the shaft that goes yeah. through it. Yeah. It's, it, there's a little bit of a shoulder around That's it. what I mean. Like the actual shaft is meatier than the old. The no, old the shaft ones. is the same. That, that's what I'm saying. The shaft is the same. <laughs> Just like you were saying. <laughs> uh, anyways. Uh, but yeah, but, you know, I think I put on, on the, your parts list, you know, like Goto tuners, which I think are perfectly fine. You yeah. can substitute Cluzons. Yeah. Um, it's just. Yeah. That, that and this is going to be, and this is going to be a telly head stock that I'm putting on it. Mm -hmm. um, I thought about going with this sort of Jazzmaster style head stock, but I like, I like a telly neck. Yeah. Uh, and I think that also kind of complements it look, being more of a mashup between a telly and a well, jag. Because the jag body is so, you know, recognizable. And oh, yeah. I mean, you already, the only thing you'll have telly going on, if you don't do the neck telly neck, 
is basically just a pickup and electronic configuration. Yeah. So the other a couple of the other cool features with this is going to be so I'm putting in a uh, brand new one wide range pickup up nice. at the neck, which I'm excited about with an aged cover. And we should do that um, so that you can tap the coil. That's yeah. right. Maybe on yeah. the tongue. We'll see. On the so tongue easy control. to do. So okay. easy to do. All right. I'm I'm game for that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then a, a just a standard Tele bridge or yeah bridge tuner. Or, yeah, um, we'll we'll actually make back. sure those are balanced well too. Yeah. Because um, in '72 they just stuck a normal everyday Tele bridge in there, which is about you know if you're lucky six k, and then your your wide range was like ten and a half k. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I would definitely beef up that bridge. Oh, pickup. big time! Because that'll yeah. it'll it'll also make it less bright. Yep, we'll beef that up and we'll lay off the output on the yeah on the on neck the wide range. Yeah, yeah it'll we'll balance as that sucker out. Okay, so. cool. Uh, let's see, what else am I doing to it? Oh, it's got the sort of like, is it fair to say it's it's a half ashtray? It's like a... It's a half Tully bridge, yeah. It's a half yeah. Tully bridge. Cut, cut Tully bridge. Yeah, because yeah. I do not like the the standard big ashtray style bridge. And what we mean by ashtray is that uh, it's, a, it's the old bridge tray that held the saddles that uh, is elevated above the body. Well, that's not entirely true. The the term ashtray comes from the, the old the covers. covers, yeah, right. But well, yeah, but I mean, but you have to have you have okay, to have a, a vintage style bridge, right? So okay, <laughs> so the vintage, but but I mean, it, it, fair to say though, those are if you say an ashtray bridge, bridge, you understand? Not me, no, not you. Okay, <laughs> you know what? Uh, he's I'm, right I'm though. The, I'm the <laughs> layman in the in the house. Well, I mean, actually, you can't you're... have. I knew exactly what you were saying. Yeah. It does make sense. I mean, you can, you know, you could use that as as an ashtray if you really had to, but you can't use a strap bridge as, you know, an ashtray. No, or yeah, but, but that's how they got the nickname because players would take that metal cover off, flip right. it over, and that's then you where, had yeah. an ashtray. I didn't you know where the term came from. That's where it came from. That's uh, very interesting. Um, I had one on the very first deli I got, and I promptly took it off. <laughs> most most people do. I hate it. it was awful. <laughs> they don't belong like there. Well, it, it depends on what kind of music you're playing too. If you if you're if you're not sort of, you know, playing heavy rock stuff, and where you're maybe a little further down on the bridge, and your hands there quite a bit. It may not even bother you, or if you're playing like just finger picking style, that may not bother you. I'm not doing that, and it bothered me. So I said, I got, I need what like a modern, the modern flat one. Usually, you can't buy them with the ashtray anymore. Yeah, they just don't come with them. No, you have to buy the cover separately. Yeah, yeah, they, they and just the bridge, discard them, yeah. and which the is what we're actually referencing right now. Oh. I like the cover better. <laughs> So anyways, but what this is, uh, and when you handed me this guitar the first thing, I was like, oh, man, it's got one of those, that, it's got one of those bridges, the old bridges with the, with the lip on it. Mm-hmm. And it did not, because it, this is only half one. Yeah. So, uh, there's, so there's no lip. There's no lip around the bridge at all. It's just a flat. No, bridge. there is. No, there is. But it's, oh, is there? It's not. The, pr- the thing is, it doesn't creep up into... Uh, into the area that you're the, the playing area quite as much, right? It's I know like, what you're saying. It's like a really abbreviated short bridge. It's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it also has. You want to tell them about the saddles? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That well, mine. Well, yours won't have this, but no, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the, this is this falls into I guess what you would call the nitpicking category, but I think it does kind of make a difference. Um, so on both the saddles. And the string ferrules that go through the back of the body, yeah, um, they're a mix of brass and aluminum. So, uh, on the in the case of the saddles, the uh, the EB and the GD are brass, and the uh, AE, um, the highest one. Okay, no, thickest just, string. Just so people aren't going like. What in the crap are you talking about? <laughs> the, these are this is a three saddle. The, oh yeah, sorry. Yeah, these are, yeah. This is a three saddle bridge. Sorry, this about is not that. a mandolin. Two, two strings per saddle. So the the, yeah, the very, old school kind. The, yeah. You know the the base the 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 lowest base strings the E and the A sit on an aluminum uh, saddle barrel whatever you want to call it, and the other four are sitting on on brass ones and, and essentially. 
aluminum is a bit of a, a more bright material yeah. than brass. Uh, so it kind of brightens those bass strings a and little why bit. Is it, why is brass less bright? Uh, it's a, I believe it's a denser material. Yeah, it weighs more. the density of the material makes all the difference. Okay. Yeah. So um, the same goes for the ferrules that are in, the, in that guitar, the, where you actually put the strings in through the back. Yep. Uh, three of them are... Also known as a string through. A so. string through, yes. So three of the ferrules are aluminum and three are brass. Right. So if you mix those up... <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, you want to you want to deaden the treble strings a little more, so use brass. Right. I don't. Well, I want it. You're gonna get. I want it. I would just give it to me the way it is. <laughs> uh, let's see. The final touches I'm going to put on this are so I, I want to do something cool with the actual knobs. I haven't figured out exactly because you know that's one of those t like last things that you're doing. Like, well, I want yeah. knobs that go on here, but. Uh, Knobs are important, though. Heck yeah, they are. Especially the way they look and how they contrast yeah. with the rest of the film. I think I, I think I just put standard nickel domes. Yeah, dome I do. On I no, you don't yeah, like no those. nickel domes for me. Okay. What? Yeah. On my other telly, I actually put uh, ja jazz bass style knobs. Oh, okay. Actually, I put one jazz bass style knob and one uh, see through uh, 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 speed knob. Now, Which, is that I don't know why they call them speed knobs because they aren't any faster. Is that more for for stage function, or is that uh, yes and no? So yes, because I want it to be distinguished. So if I'm reaching down trying to control stuff, yeah, uh, that your I, fingers I know my it. finger knows like oh that's the one oh, <laughs> right because yeah. I don't mess around with the tone. I'm just yeah. like I, here's the thing. I could really just have guitars that have far less stuff on it. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that's kind of like, I don't know. I can't get, I can't control the guitar. I like bells and whistles too, man. Yeah. I'm guilty yeah, as charged. I like all Give that me the bell, bells and whistles. But I also like the ability of having it on there. All right, I, so on the, my other telly, I have, <laughs> but this is my punk rock telly. This is my one from like, you know, when I play in that kind of music. Yeah. Uh, I have the, 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 it's actually a five-way switch because it's a it's a Nashville uh, uh, deluxe. Okay, it's got a middle so it's pickup. got it's got a middle pickup. Um, but I have that all the way in the bridge with a piece of checkered <laughs> duct tape holding it move. in place. Do not move because <laughs> I've done that live, and then all of a sudden I'm playing out of the bridge. I'm like, dip, what, dip, no, right? Yeah. Uh, and then you know fixing the knob so. Well, you know, on mine, uh, okay. I flip the control plate because right. normally the switch is closest to the pickup. Right. I always, on all my tellies, I flip it around so that the volume is closest to the pickup. So if yep. you ever do volume like, pink, swells, pinky swells, yeah. right. uh, it's easier to reach. And it also right. keeps the switch out of the way because I have the same problem. Right. And so I'm not going to do that because I want the volume all the way back because that's where I can reach back and just go... I don't have to. I don't have to try to figure it out. I'm not going to be able. I don't want to accidentally hit the volume while I'm playing, so I'm going to run it standard. But I'm going to basically like jig everything down, tape it down, semi punk it up a little bit. Vinny, Vinny's going to have a little character. Well, Vinny's going to know. know what to do with himself. Eh? There's oh. a real easy way to do that. Just not, wire wire the switch. Yeah, yeah there you go. But I want the option. There you go. We'll solder it in one position. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But all the hardware is going to be uh, just. Distressed a little bit, yeah. And you want that's why I I, I, I put nickel down right. on things because want to use nickel. Chrome. I don't want it chrome. Does, chrome doesn't distress. No. Now just to let everybody know though, chrome was mainly used by Fender. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, you mentioned yeah. that in the uh, previous one. I, I think. think except for the very early fifties and mm -hmm. and and you know when yeah. But uh, interestingly, in order to do a chrome finish. They have to be nickel plated first. Interesting. That's right. So let's Same talk a little bit about logistics here, everybody. Let's um, do it. Uh, specifically on mine, uh, because I think what we're starting from absolute scratch and parts haven't been ordered and everything. Uh, you know, when I said oh, I gave Tony, I told Tony I want to do this, and then he gave me a list. Uh, he since he already built that one, he had the list. Mm -hmm essentially, and he knows where to go get that. But we're literally buying every single part. Mm -hmm. uh, all the electronics, Wire, everything. everything. We're buying Screws. it. Um, I will ultimately, the only thing I'm going to need somebody else to do is essentially uh, finish it, uh, finish the, the the body with the paint 
and, and stuff like that. And, and wind your pickups. It, well, yeah. And make your pick garden. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All those things, yes. But f- you know what I mean. People know what I mean. Yeah. Walking well, here's the deal. Well, I mean, to me, finishing is really probably the hardest part of, of That's of why the, I don't want to I mean, do to get it. a good finish. Yeah. yeah, and I, I've got sources for that, but it's also fun to try to do it yourself too. Yeah, and given the finish that you want to use, yep, I think to accomplish what you want to do, I know you want to put gold under black. It doesn't have to have a gold. Um, mm-hmm. But if you do uh, satin clear coat and then just bring it back up on a buffer, yeah, um, you don't get that really super glossy finish. Yeah, but it's somewhere in between satin and gloss. Yeah. Um, a satin finish is pretty easy to shoot. Okay. Maybe, now, I'll, maybe I'll try that. Maybe my good buddy Chase can help me out because yeah. he's got a booth now. Yeah, if he's got a booth, I mean, I and you could learn a thing or two. Yeah, I'd like to do that. If and anyone, he already offered. So. If anyone <laughs> wants to try this at home, just be careful with nitro or... Or oh, that's like not that even that a try at home. That's not even like a. Yeah, don't. Yeah, it's available. Don't. It's well, available, if you're in your I mean, don't don't go spraying that stuff in your basement either. No, because your your intake from your yeah. furnace will catch that yeah. or a hot water tank. And yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You can blow your house up. Don't do that. Yes, and you can stink it up instantly. And really, can, any spray paint wet or a poly yeah. finish or a celluloid finish. Yes. Yeah. Do it outdoors. Please. Yes. Or don't do it near anybody who's who's barbecuing. Be very careful when you <laughs> when you mess with these kind of chemicals. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the only other thing that I will mention about this uh, that I almost forgot was that I, th- I do want to take the neck down on the back. So sort of a, a D finish on the back of the neck. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Yeah. More of a uh, satiny. Yep, yeah, I have that on my other telling. I do yeah. like it a lot. Yeah, and that's easy enough to do with yeah. either uh, steel wool yep. or micro mesh. Um, so we're gonna do pictures of all this stuff coming along. It's gonna be great and everything. But um, the coolest part about this, like, and just parts alone, because we can't figure in what service is gonna go into this, whether it's. Uh, finishing. Be careful or not, when you start or, quoting prices. Uh, well, I'm not <laughs> quoting. I'm you're getting buddy deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I am. I, I'm, get, I'm getting buddy deals because you're a distributor. But, but I don't. But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna mention that. Yeah. I'm just saying, if if someone else wanted to do this, where would they ballpark? Like, I mean, uh, all around. I mean, it would. I mean, it, depending. Just the parts. Just the parts. I, I would say at um, at at retail pricing. Yeah. Uh, you'd probably be looking at somewhere between nine hundred and twelve hundred dollars. Okay. When all was said and done. Okay. I think you know, depending on and and, and depending well, on so how much. What, what's cool? What I think is cool about that is that uh, if you want something that's truly original and that you get the experience of doing, you, that is the range. That that is like sort of the no man's land. You're either buying a factory guitar for less than that, under a grand. Mm-hmm. Or you're buying a, a custom guitar from a from a luthier who's who's a small luthier, which now you're talking at least I'd say what at least twelve hundred no oh oh more than that I'm yeah just, I mean, two three thousand dollars is, but now th- and then there are Actually, some other options if someone <laughs> if they want to keep the lights on you know? I yeah. mean there are, there are plenty of kits that you can buy that are made overseas they're not great. But if you but just want get you the into experience, it. oh yeah, I mean and you can buy them every day of the cheap. week for probably under yeah. two hundred bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually, wouldn't recommend doing that. Actually, um, Stumac is doing uh, oh, their that's own right. uh, kits now. Yep. So those are worth checking out. They uh, they are a a huge huge resource of luthier tools as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean everything you time. need. That's that's where you well, go. And, they'll and, get you going too. And this is this is the other part of it now. Yeah. We're not including things like nut files or, you know, different things like that that, that I've already purchased that sure. I have. But somebody going out starting from scratch, you're, there are certain tools well, that you're going to have There's only a certain amount of scratch that we're talking about right now because, yeah. like, the, the, the nut is already is pre-cut. Mm, yeah, it's cut. Right? It's, pre, it's, it's okay. pre-slotted, but it's it hasn't been refined. All right. So, uh, you know, you may have to do a thing or two or ask a favor of a friend or two, yeah. but... Point is, you can get into your full own custom made, handmade guitar for, let's say, just, I'm just gonna ballpark like about a thousand bucks. So under a thousand. Un- under, under a thousand, thousand bucks. If yeah. you're doing like a straight Telecaster style, 
Yeah, any day of the week. Yeah, and you can find those on, you know, whether on auction, even uh, you go mail order. Yeah, even check Amazon out, sells check, this I'd, stuff now. I'd start with, I'd start checking out at Stumac just to see what something from a, a very reputable yeah. company is going to be. Or, 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 and, or, and it's worth subscribing to Stumac just to get the catalog. They they put they publish a tremendous catalog a couple of times a year, and it's you know it's like when I was young we'd get the Sears or the Pennies catalog at sure. Christmas time, and it was like, ooh, hoo, yeah. Hoo. I wonder if they have any new models out. I don't remember looking at those too. Yeah, and as you said before, I think Todd, um, if if you know somebody that's kind of into this, it doesn't hurt to ask for some advice and some direction. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That that's probably the best bit of advice. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, you can do it on your own, uh, but you will. I mean, inevitably run into something where you have to yeah. ask, yeah. how do I fix this? Uh, speaking of Stumac, I do want to uh, pass on the information. So um, one of the friends of the podcast uh, with the handle Tones Chaser, all one word, T-O-N-E-S-C-H-A-S-E-R, uh, works oh, with cool. Dan, the... The, the, the famous guy on the videos that is that you watch till two in the morning. That's going, right. Oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So yep. he's he's been working with him for a long time, and he's got a great Instagram account that kind of really lets you see a um, an inside view of what's going on at that shop as they're repairing things. A uh, lot of cool gear that he features, and so he's definitely worth a follow. Tones Chaser. We got to go down to Athens, guys. Yeah, yeah I know. Been talking about it forever. Hour, know, hour and a half trip it's or not so. Not far. Yeah, I'm gonna be playing there in in uh, January. Sweet. But anyways, <laughs> I digress. Um, so okay, that's super fun. I can't wait to do it. I'm excited. I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. Hopefully soon. Hopefully Santa Claus. Well, is really mine's nice underway. To me. We should do some uh, uh, whether it's on you know Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Just kind of works in progress. Here's oh yeah, what we've done. Yeah, updates. We can do it here at the show too. Simon. Well, mine's underway, guys. So I will post a picture when the podcast comes. Sounds when good. you guys are hearing this, boom. Sounds nice. good. There it is. Let's get on with the, with wrapping this up. Well. There's one thing I want to do is, uh, would you rather? Oh, man. Okay, this week's. good on these headphones. Yeah. Oh, man. Wow. All right. I, I was practicing that. <laughs> Velvet <laughs> fog. Yes. So Smog. this week's uh, would you rather, <laughs> would you rather have a set neck, which is glued into the body, never going to go anywhere, shouldn't anyway, or would you rather have a bolt-on neck? Fair enough. Tony. Well. Um, I mean, there are advantages to both. I like the uh, changeability uh, of a bolt neck guitar. Yeah. I mean, if you're building a Fender style guitar, you almost always have to have a bolt neck. Um, the The biggest advantage of of a set neck or glued in neck is the stability, as you said. It's it's in there. It's glued in. Yeah. It's also much more difficult to make. Um, and so what I have found on like on, on, on the Fender style guitars is I've been using, uh, they're called threaded inserts. And basically it's instead of using, that. instead of using uh, screws, there's usually four screws that hold the neck in place. You actually use bolts that go into a threaded insert that's in the holes in the neck. You got to show me this system. Man. Oh yeah, it's great. And I tell you what, I have, I, I, the, the first set that I used, I was sold because I had this guitar that I couldn't get the neck into the um, into the uh, pocket, pocket yeah. deep enough. It just stopped, and I couldn't. You know, there was some lacquer buildup or whatever. And I said, you know what? I'm going to try these threaded inserts. So I put the threaded inserts in, and it literally pulled the neck into the into the pocket yeah. oh, about an eighth better, of an inch. Yeah, there's not a it better feeling, goes, man. I mean, you feel Is it. Is that from the dude that uh, was at the show? Uh, the the there, there was a guy that was walking around the last show, the, the um, not the Chicago show, but the last um, Hilliard show, the Hilliard show, Columbus, yeah. and he was walking around and he's like, "Hey, I, I'd like to show you my." Uh, I, so I made these, and I was like, "What? What? What is this?" And he had a he had in his case he had a guitar, he actually had a bass, a P bass uh, that he pulled the neck off, uh, and showed me. Essentially, what you're saying is that they're basically uh, cuffs, like mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know what they were made it's, out it's of. It's got a, a coarser thread around the outside and then a fine thread on the inside that yeah. a machine bolt yeah. fits in. So it sits actually in the wood mm-hmm. as a receiver. Correct. Almost like a think about think about it like if if you put just a, a, a nut inside the wood, right, and then screwed your bolt into. Yep. It's machine on machine. It's metal on metal. Yep. Instead of metal into wood. Correct. Uh, and so I. Everybody was gathering around like, holy mackerel, what? Look at this thing. This is amazing. Um, so I, I'm wondering if it's the same guy. It, well, I mean, I just get then, mine down at Columbus Fastener. and Oh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you can buy the threaded inserts or you can buy them online. Yeah, well, he was making them specifically for for the guitars. So I don't know. Anyways. I don't know if he's making can, I mean, you can, can you Can you sense an audible or hear an audible difference? Um. I mean, I think that the neck body joint is much more solid. I mean, you can pick a guitar with those up by the headstock, shake it around, yeah. and it won't move. Don't do that. So, yes, <laughs> please do not try this at home. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, a bolt neck system. With, um, with the with, threaded, with, with yeah. threaded inserts. Okay. Yeah. I'm doing the same thing. Jared, we're going to let you go last year, but I'm doing the same thing. I want to. I like. I like tinkering and... Getting into the instrument, I like understanding. I like it makes me feel closer to it. I know that sounds probably a little bit weird, but with the Gibsons that I have, there's only so much that I can do with it uh, that isn't purely just cosmetic. Mm -hmm. And with my fenders and stuff, I mean, those things have been in complete parts, and I put them back together, and it's 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 fun, and and I feel more attached to that instrument as a result that's not the only reason should anything happen i'm not completely screwed i could still salvage the guitar you know? yeah uh, well so. here's you know I, and i think the inserts thing uh i think it was danny gatton that that used it when he would travel he would literally take the strings off take the neck off the guitar put the body in the neck into a the danny back. gatton yeah wow yeah I didn't on know his telecasters. Now, let, let's just mention for anybody that isn't familiar with Danny Gavin, which which is, you know, he was a, an older dude that he's the king of the chicken pickers. Man, oh my goodness, he is a. If you are done, if you don't know who this is, and it's okay if you don't, because a lot of people don't who are especially in more in the the rock uh, arena. But surely we can all agree that we can appreciate somebody who is a master at playing something. They called him the humbler. This he, he just, <laughs> when you watch we, him we, play, we, you you'll know it. why. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've all seen guys you, you want to chop your yeah. your, your left hand off after yeah. watching him. <laughs> he is good. Uh, yeah. So, anyways, he's he's worth checking out. So, if you but, if but anyhow, anything. I think I read somewhere that that's because he would travel overseas mm-hmm. and didn't want to put his tullies into uh, into the sense. cargo hold. So yeah. he would take the necks off, put them in kind of like a, uh, a, a maybe a light uh, an oversized bag or whatever. You know that it, based on what you said earlier with your intro, I'm wondering if that is a way to actually say, "I'm going to ship you my guitar that you just bought for me. Would you like me to remove the neck?" Except mine was glued in. Well, <laughs> I mean, uh, yes, but say if you're going to buy a, a but if you're going to buy a Fender a, style a, guitar, a Telecaster or, or off of Reverb or something, and they and, seem to do better in the shipping area. Well, it's it's a lot cheaper to ship because it's a smaller box. Smaller box, no lighter, risk of it yeah. breaking. Generally, yeah. they are lighter. Yeah, that be that's interesting. Yeah, I've never done that, and I've never had anybody offer that. I've known people who have have done that and and prefer to have if they're buying something or some of their customers. I mean, like it makes sense because if you buy a parts guitar, that's how you're going to get it anyways. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's something to consider. Guitar universe. That's right. Uh, Jared. Well, I love both of them. I, I just it's really difficult for me to to, going, to have to choose one. Yeah, the yes, I am. Gibsons. You know it. <laughs> and the reason I'm going to go set neck is I'm not hating on the other. It's just because my absolute favorite guitar in the whole universe, besides an acoustic that I have, is in my 1962 SG Les Paul. I love that guitar. The the tone for days, man. And it's just just because the neck is set in the way it's built and because that's my favorite guitar and it sounds the best to me, 
that's why I'm going to pick it. All right. That's, Fair it's, enough. It's very simple. It's, it's, I'm sorry I don't have any, you know, deep technical reasons why. Just, they used, uh, you're doing it like, wrong. hide glue. <laughs> they used hide glue back in the 60s. I mean, I don't know how they did it. They dipped it in mojo or I don't know what the heck they did. Mm. But uh, the just, instrument just sounds just really good. Good. Yeah, it's old. Right. It's been played a million times. All right. Woo wee. That was fun. I loved it. I love doing this. I'm excited. Can't wait to see the feedback. <laughs> I, what? I think it'd be fine. Uh, hey, everybody out there. Just want to remind you that Reverb.com is a marketplace just for musicians yep. all over the world. You can buy, sell, make offers, and negotiate with complete protection. Yep. Whether you're selling from home or if music gear is your day job, there are millions of listings online already, and it's free to list yours, too. Just join the Musician's Marketplace at Reverb.com. I also want to give a gargantuan thank you. Oh. Humongoid. <laughs> mega low awesome. Thank you to the following. Brand new, Sean S. Hey, Sean S. Sean, thank you. And is Oliver that, is Gonzalez. That, is, is that ESS? No, just S. <laughs> Oliver. Thanks, Oliver. I don't think he's like a junior. Yep. <laughs> okay. Sean S. and Oliver Gonzalez are two new buddies on the Patreon. Thank you, guys. Welcome. Thank yes. you. Yes. And they are joined by other co-Patreonites. Yeah, you could say I guess. that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> John Daly, Robin Smith, Derek Fitzer, Pete Marshall, Carlos Mancha, Matt Brammer, David Wolfson, Martin Cliff, Tom Barazin. Dudes, thank you so much, our executive producers. Uh, if you would like to become an executive producer, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs to find out how. Seriously, dudes, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. You've got your name right on the thing. Subscribe! Yeah. yeah. Glued through the book. <laughs> well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the guitar knobs. Visit our website at theguitarknobs.com for all of our past episodes, four on the floor blog, and other good stuff. You can connect with us on social too at our Facebook page and share your gear and stories on our Facebook group. Also, be sure to check out our Instagram at Guitar Knobs. Catch you next time.